Give me a pause at the, at the end, at the beginning, but wow, good evening everybody. So usually I say good morning, but good evening, 5 o'clock on a Friday, so I bow down to all of you, and I'm not even there. And seriously, shout out to all of you guys just for coming today, and hopefully I can just do my part to make it a little bit exciting for you. Anyway, it's good to be with you, and I just want to make sure that I did make it into the right room this evening. Do any of you work with any challenging, disruptive, or unmotivated kids in any way? <laughs> yes, I got there. Well, good. Actually, really quick, before we get started, I'm just curious to know, the quick show of hands, how many of you in here today yourselves were challenging, disruptive, or unmotivated back when you were kids in school? Anybody? A few of you? That's it? All right, here's another question. How many of you have become more disruptive as you've gotten older? <laughs> a few more, right? All of a sudden, now you get in trouble and you break rules. Good. Well, I'm going to tell you the really long story short version of who I am and why I'm here and why you are listening to me. I was an extremely disruptive kid back when I was in school, to the point where I was kicked out of school when I was in sixth grade, which I always joke is hard to do. It's not easy to get yourself kicked out of public school, but I was able to do it. And the really quick version of why I was kicked out, all, all that stems from a pretty severe learning disability that I had as a kid that I somewhat today continue to have as an adult. And in my personal opinion, it's the number one thing that you can struggle with in school, and it will make school a really, really hard place. Anyone want to guess what that is? I have ADHD too, but that's not my learning disability. What's the number one skill that kids need to be successful in school? Reading, right? I always say if you're a really good reader in school, you spend your whole life on the honor roll, and you get all the awards, and everybody always tells you how smart you are. But if you're a really good public speaker in school like I was, you spend your whole life in trouble and in detention. <laughs> you know how the kids who aren't afraid to say to the teacher's face that their lesson stinks? Because trust me, 25 of us were thinking it, but I was a kid who would have said it right to your face. And you know what? I like saying it. And of course, what are they going to do, right? Are they going to call my mommy? Uh-oh. Right? Their little referral form and send me down to the principal's office? Whoa, don't do that. Let me guess what's coming next. Do y'all around these parts still have that thing they call in-school suspension, yes or no? You mean I get to come to school, but I don't have to go to class? <laughs> I'm asking, is that what that means? I get to come to school, but I don't have to go to class. And there's people in this room who believe that's a consequence, right? I loved ISS when I was a kid. You know what else I loved about ISS? All them teachers had to bring me my work. <laughs> Serve me my work, teachers. I am the king. You know the hotels I stay in across this country, right? I pay extra for room service, not ISS. They deliver free. What's the last consequence I like to get in schools? Oh, suspension? What do you think your kids here in Syracuse are doing when they're suspended from school? I think they're already in action plan for how they're going to improve their behavior. Really, what do you think? No, what are they doing? Yeah, we're like one of my high school kids said to me once, Mr. Melner, you know we're doing we're suspended, right? And I said, what? And he started laughing. He goes, drop her off at your house. We know where you are. You're at work. <laughs> like, anyway, just so you know, my major problem personally for myself began in school back when I was in fourth grade. Up until fourth grade, when I was a kid, you could fake it. Think you could look at pictures and listen to your friends. But fourth grade, you things got bad for me. And on top of that, I had by at the time considered to be the worst teacher of all time. Her name was Mrs. Mills. I truly deep down believe she hated kids. Okay, let's get this out of the way right now. And I know this isn't like 99% of you, but if you, you just know if you don't like children, there's other professions, right? Maybe this isn't a good profession. Uh, maybe she just didn't like me. That was possible too. But I'll never forget it was a Tuesday night. She gave us this homework assignment, 1 through 21 odd, which is a normal assignment that a lot of teachers give their kids. And I went home and I did the problems, and it took me two hours to do two of them. And I finished the second problem, I was sitting with my mother right at the kitchen table. And I looked at her and I said, Mom, listen to me. I can't do any more of these. I'm exhausted. And I'll never forget my mom that day because she looked at me and she said, okay, Brian, that's fine, no problem. Except, well, see, you're going to have to live with the consequences. Now, I'm guessing some of you or many of you in this room have children of your own. If you have your own children, could you raise your hand for me real quick? Right? Cool. Question only for you. Do your children ever say anything to you that makes a whole lot of sense, but you don't have a good answer for them? You know what I mean by that? Or literally you're sitting there and you're like, the kid is such a wise ass, but I kind of like it at the same time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway, anytime my brother and myself would do anything like that with my mom, she would pretend that we didn't say it. But as mean as what I said back to my mom in that moment of my life, to this day of my life, I still have not gotten an answer for it. Because I looked at my mom and I said this. Consequences, mom. <laughs> Why would there be consequences? I just worked for two straight hours on this. And you're telling me I'm going to go to school and there's going to be consequences? You must be kidding me, right? And I'll never forget my mom that day because she literally just looked me directly in the 
asked if she got up and started washing the dishes. She didn't say one word. But I found out quickly what she meant the next day when I got to school. Because the teacher, Mrs. Mills, one of those teachers who somehow had time in her day to wander around the room to every single kid. And she always, all the time, had her little grade book open. And she had her little head in her ear. So she would walk around the room and every kid she would go like this. Like the 40th time we turn a kid's paper over, the rest of the problem is going to magically appear. Like I never understand teachers who do that. They look at it sideways and upside down, and I'm like, they're not there, they're not coming. Like what are you looking for? Sorry about that. And I'll never forget, she looked at me and she goes, uh, where are the rest of these, Brian? And I looked at her and I said, well, last night I, and that was as far as I got, I didn't get very far with that lady. She was really, really good at cutting kids off. And not only did she cut you off, but then she made fun of you. And I remember that day well because she looked at me and she said, last night I, <laughs> last night I, yeah, Brian, I'm sure you're going to have a story for where the rest of these problems are because you always seem to have a story for everything. Do you know what I think? I think you're lazy. I think you're unmotivated. I think you need to try harder, that's what she said. Now, y'all know when you're 10 years old, 10, and a teacher tells you to your face in front of your friend that you're lazy and unmotivated you try harder, you don't have a lot of good options. But I'd like to guess what I felt like doing in that moment. Punch your hand, yeah, that's not a bad guess. Leave it. Yeah, okay, really what I felt like doing was a combination between crying, and I didn't actually feel like punching her. I mean, that was a good guess. Close. I felt like taking these two fingers and these two fingers and putting them inside her ugly, stupid mouth and tearing it off of her head. I mean, honestly, that's how angry I felt. I think sometimes in education, occasionally, there's a disconnect between how angry some kids get and how angry some adults think we get. How dare any of you ever embarrass me in front of my friends, ever. But see, I never hit a teacher on the mouth with my hand, so how did I have to hit her with my what? Words, any of you know kids that are good at that, yes or no? I was really good at that. I was, what did they call the smart kids in school again? I was advanced placement in that. No, I was, I was gifted and I was talented at that. Would you like to know how I fought back with her that day, yes or no? Alright, I'm going to tell you that in a minute. But before I tell you that, I want to tell you all that I'm still a little bit mad at all of you from when I was a kid. Well, not really you, but all my teachers. And you want to know something crazy is that the system hasn't changed. See, it wasn't enough for everybody that I struggled with reading as a kid. That was not enough. See, on top of that, they had to call me names for it, too. Which is very strange, because don't you all tell your students not to call each other names? You do, right? Don't call each other names, don't make fun of each other, and don't label each other. Crap, yes or no? Then, interesting, then what a bunch of hypocrites we all are. Because then we turn around, we do exactly kids like me, when we tell them not to do each other. Want to know what they called me when I was in school? They called me disabled. They said I was learning disabled because I couldn't read very well. They gave me this thing at the time that they called it IEP. They put me in special classes. They had meetings about me all the freaking time. He did. All because I couldn't read very well. See, today I'm smart enough to know that I'm not at all disabled, not one else. I even look. They had it all wrong. I just struggled with something in my life. I struggled with reading. Why, you all don't struggle with anything in your lives? That would be a question. <laughs> do any of you struggle with anything in your lives? Yes or no? You do, right? Well, because mine's reading, I'm disabled. Some of you. Some of you, of course, drink an entire bottle of wine every single night when you go home from work, but you have no issues in your life, do you? You don't need any IEPs or any special classes. You probably need a meeting or two, right? <laughs> but kids like me, we can't read very well and learn disabled? Guess what, guys? I'm not learning disabled. You know what else I never was? But what's crazy is they tell you something long enough in school, you actually start believing it, don't you? Learning disabled. Anyway, want to know how I back Mrs. Mills that day? I can't even tell you. I looked that lady directly in the eyes and I said this. Maybe I'm lazy, that is certainly possible. And maybe I'm unmotivated, that is definitely possible too. Or maybe it's possible that you're just a really, really shitty teacher. <laughs> Did you ever consider that? Because that's what I think, ma'am. I think you have no idea how to teach. And if they let you go to teacher school, then anybody in the whole world can become a teacher. Funny, right? Uh -huh. 
You'll never guess who else laughed that day, by the way. But my mom. You just said my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Not my mom, it's right. Not my mom. My mom didn't laugh. Who did laugh? Yeah, all the other kids, right? They thought I was hilarious, and I kind of was. But guess who didn't laugh? Now she left. Ain't my other problems with I did that day. Well, truthfully, there were multiple problems with I did that day. But the main problem for me was this. See, I was already disabled because I couldn't read very well. But see, now, now officially, Brian calls teachers names too, which made me disturbed emotionally. See, now not only was I learning disabled on my IEP, but now they had an emotional disturbance with the Are you taking a picture, bud? Come on. Get a good one. Come on, take, go ahead now. Well, people are taking pictures, and so what happens is sometimes they take pictures, and you're going like this, and then like most of the time, that's what my wife's like, why are you screaming at people? And I'm like, I'm not. I was actually not. I was actually smiling then, but pictures are deceiving sometimes, so. Cool. No videos today, if you don't mind, please, but pictures are fine. Anyway, just make sure I'm looking at you so I can you can get a smile, all right? Anyway, um, disturbed emotionally, yeah. And um, so not only was I there, I, I was learning to say, but now they had an emotional disturbance in me. Disorder. And I'm not sure if y'all know what they do with kids like me in school. I mean, they didn't want me to contaminate all the normal kids. We might actually breathe on them or something. So they literally, and I mean literally, picked me up out of the regular class and they shipped me down to the WAC. I mean, self contained special ed. Y'all know what self contained special ed is? Yes or no? It's like the room in the corner. Sometimes we're in the basement. If they can find like a leftover closet, they'll give us one of those sometimes for a classroom. In some school districts in this country, kids like me have so much power, you know what they do literally? They just build us our own school. Yeah, no, they really do. They build us an entire building, you know, for us and special ed kids, the ones who cause all the problems around here. And I spent about a year of my life in self-contained special ed. And I have to tell you, it's very much a double-edged sword for me. Do you know what I mean by that? It was good and bad at exactly the same time. See, on one hand, it was really good. It truly was good. Why? Well, for the reasons it's good, right? I finally got some teachers that understood me. We didn't freak out at every little thing that I did. I'm going to give you an example of one thing that I did. They've been telling me lately from my office not to do this, which is why I'm going to do it, because I'm incredibly oppositional, so every time they tell me not to do something, I feel much stronger to do it. But anyway, I was only in there for a minute, and, and um, she asked me to do something. Nothing big, something like take out your books. And I looked at my teacher, and I went just like this. What, y'all want some back there too? He's just walking in, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like, what is going on? <laughs> this dude put me up, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. But I will never forget my teacher that day for as long as I live. Because imagine this for a second. A kid's got their middle finger up in a teacher's face. And the teacher's looking back at the kid. A kid, you know what I tell you, she's smiling the single biggest smile I've ever seen. She's looking at me like this. And then she looks me directly in the eyes and she looks just like this. What I did that was so bad that you couldn't handle me in your regular class. Why? Because I 
controversy a little bit. Because he said, we, we, we. Excuse me, man. I have a question. Does it really matter if I have 10 problems or 2 problems as long as I show you how to multiply? Why on earth as a teacher would you ever care how many problems your kid does? Isn't the only thing you should care about the outcome of the problems? For that I was, oh, I remember what I was. But we don't call people names, correct? Yes or no? Are you sure we don't call this the weirdest thing? Because I don't know what they call me frequently. They call me defiant. That was a big one that they like to use. You know what else they frequently call me? They call me uncooperative. That was another one that they like. You know what else they call me? They call me rude. And they said I was obnoxious. And they said I was mean. And they said I was nasty. And we are all hypocrites, hypocrites, hypocrites. Y'all don't get it full of space, man. You either believe in calling people names or you don't. By the way, anyone feel a little bit uncomfortably out of this room? Good, that's the goal. Because remember the rule of life, guys, this comfort is always the appetizer for growth. You cannot grow in this world without feeling at least a little bit of discomfort first. By the way, that should both physically and emotionally. And right now, right this moment, when your kids are losing it at school, and they're saying, I don't want to do your stupid reading assignment anymore. I want you to remind them of what I'm reminding you right now. Look at them and say, are you guys uncomfortable? And when they say yes, yeah, say good, good, that's my goal. Because discomfort is healthy, it's good for you. See, in life, what happens when we become uncomfortable is we want to run from the discomfort. We want to hide from it. We want to put walls up all around it. But not today, not with me, not for one hour. For one hour of your life, I'm going to ask you to embrace the discomfort. Hug it, hang out with it, marinate in it. And understand that by the end of it, I promise you, you will feel better for it. Anyway, here in my life, I'm there. One hand, it was good. Other hand, it was bad. And for me, the bad outweighed the good because as a kid, you just want one thing in the world, which is to do what? Fit in. That's it. You just want to fit in. By the way, that's the total opposite of me as a presenter right now, by the way. I hate fitting in. In fact, if I'm like any other presenter you've ever seen in your life, shoot me before I leave here today. So I'm good. But as a child, one thing, the only thing I cared about was fitting in. So I decided I was going to get out of special ed. I'll tell you the rest of that story in a second. But amazing how my, my teacher responded that way, you know. And I did a, a workshop today, a full day workshop with a school district not far from here called Parish Schools. Have you guys heard of that? And so we were talking about diffusing kids. And they had all these questions. They were like, how do you diffuse kids that are really upset? And I, I looked at them and I was like, just agree with the kid. There's no better way to diffuse a kid than to agree with them. Mr. Miller, you're a dick. Correct. <laughs> Correct. There is no question. Sometimes I am. And I could be a bigger one. Would you like to see or not? Mr. Miller, I hate you. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense because there's actually times I hate myself. <laughs> so if there's times I hate myself, and it makes sense that there'd be times you don't like me as well. Mr. Miller, you're dumb. Correct? I mean, for what, 50 grand a year? I didn't pick this profession, did I not? I mean, tell me how dumb I am, because I wasn't exactly sure I knew that on my own. Appreciate it, kid. I mean, what more does the kid have to say back than when you simply agree with them? Just agree with them. 95 mile an hour fastballs coming from the pitcher to the catcher. There is one way, one way only to defuse that fastball. Catch it. Set it down. Here it comes. Catch it. Set it down. See, the teachers who struggle with kids, they're trying to hit the ball back. And it goes, they don't know where it's going to go. It takes bad hops. And it goes all over the place and they hit you in the face. Just catch it. Set it down. The best story I have about this, I was working in a place called McAllen, Texas. Have any of you ever been to McAllen, Texas? Heard of McAllen, Texas? It is directly on the Mexico border. If you come out of the airport, you turn right here in Texas, you turn left here in Mexico. Anyway, I was working, anyway, I was working at a school down there, and this little old lady teacher came up to me. She was about this tall. She had bright white hair and a leather skin face. And she goes, bro, I think I caught it one time, but I don't know what you think. I was like, okay, what happened? She said, I'm going to warn you what happened. Before I warn you, I have to tell you what this kid said to me is the worst thing you've ever heard a kid say to their teacher in your entire life. I guarantee you've never heard anything worse. And I said, great, what he said. She goes, you can't say it, it's too bad. I said, but how am I supposed to know if you don't say it? She goes, right, good point, okay, I'm gonna say it. But it's not me saying it, it's the kid. I'm like, I got you, lady. By the way, I want to warn y'all, it's not me saying it, it's your kid in Texas. <laughs> Sixth grader, by the way, I can teach middle school in here, we all have. Sixth grade, Charlotte, middle school, middle school, middle school, 